we will now consider the flow between two infinite parallel plates. So the plates are again, they are infinite in dimension in the horizontal direction. So, and they are placed in a way that we chose the origin, that we choose the origin to be right in the middle between the two. So you can see that this is one plate and this is the other plate and this is extending to infinity in length. Uh, so in the x direction. And that is how, that is why the definition or the setting of the topic flow between two infinite parallel plates. The plates are supposed to be parallel so that origin lies right in the middle of, uh, uh, middle and in such a way that the, the distance from here to here is h and it is the same distance that lies between these two plates. So this means the distance between the two plates is 2h. Of course, we can choose the origin to be on the bottom plate if we like, but it looks more uh, symmetric, more decent if we choose it to be right in the middle. So it doesn't really affect the nature of the solution. The solution will remain the same only when we put the boundary conditions after necessary integration uh, of the limits. Uh, really, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, may, maybe the way the answer is written will change. But when we interpret it, the physical interpretation will remain the same. So therefore, we choose it in this way, and as you can see, that this is an arbitrary choice of origin. And of course, as always, y is shown to be in the uh, vertical direction. So this is the geometry in which the fluid is flowing, and let us say it's flowing from this to this direction, and uh, it may flow in the y direction also. So there may be a flow field if the fluid is moving from this direction to this direction that in the end, because what is going to change the nature of the fluid field? When it touches the fluid, when it touches the boundary, the plate, the viscosity takes place. And viscosity's role is such that the fluid sticks to the boundary, and as the fluid goes away from it, the its velocity increases. And then at a certain point, it takes its maximum value. So if you see, it's parabolic in nature, and some distance away from this vertical line, it will achieve its maximum value, in the x direction, but right at the boundaries, it will be zero because of viscosity. So let the upper and lower plates be placed in a way that I have just described. The, the origin is a distance h apart from both plates. So the total distance between the two plates will be considered as, let's say, 2h. In the standard way of integration that we did in the earlier in the single plate format and so on, the value of u will turn out to be y square over 2 mu. Mu is the coefficient of viscosity of the fluid. dp by dx is some pressure. And then a and b are constants of integration. And applying the no-slip conditions, u is equal to zero at both the plates. Uh, this has a good reason, and I have already explained that when the fluid is touching the plates, the viscosity will not allow it to move. In fact, 
the fluid will stick to the wall. And that is why this boundary condition takes care of that situation. By putting these boundary conditions in these equations, when we calculate its value, then the value of the velocity component u is obtained as this. And you can see how does it look like. If we consider this to be some portional area, some constant area, then u is kind of proportional to y square. So it's parabolic in nature. And that is why the velocity will have this kind of parabolic nature. And its distances between y, this is y, and this is for x, and obviously the distance between this to this is h. So they are measured and they are reflected in the solution that they play a role in the velocity behavior. If the plates are kept too much apart, the velocity will be affected accordingly. The amount of fluid passing through at a certain cross-section is given by this quantity, uh, whereas the value of um is the mean velocity or average velocity over the region, and therefore, and the value of p is, will be equal to the pressure will be given by this and can be computed. The shear force at the wall that we calculated earlier will have this value, and the coefficient of friction is defined to be this ratio or this number. And finally, if the, both the plates are allowed to move, then uh, some adjustment in the solution has to be made. And if we allow the velocities to be u1 and u2 for the upper and lower plates respectively, the solution will look like this, and it will be affected in this manner. Still, you see, the nature of the solution is dominated by this term y square that is in parabolic in nature. These are other, there are some linear components and constants also contribution to the velocity profile, but more or less it will be of the same type. So, in fact, all these geometries are met in real life, and for each of them, these solutions are available from Navier-Stokes equation.